Hi, this is Greg from Business Automated and today I'm going to show you how to create a scenario which allows you to type search phrases inside of Airtable and then through a custom connection inside of Integromat retrieve the search results for those phrases from your Gmail account back into Airtable. Let's get started. The first step we need to set up our Airtable and let's do it very quickly. So let's start with the search phrase here. And the next step, we don't need all those columns, but we just need one column that will be called button. Before we create the button, we need to have a webhook from Integromat. So let's create the thing quickly. I already have a new scenario open here. and we will create a custom webhook. Click Add New Webhook. Okay. Now let's copy this email address over here. And let's go back over here and create the proper button. And inside of the formula, we will type quotation marks, our webhook address, and at the end of the webhook address, we will do a question mark and type record ID equals close the quotation mark. And now we will do ampersand and type record ID using the record ID formula. Okay, now, so when we click on the button, it will open Integromat. It says at the moment there is no scenario listening on this webhook, so let's just quickly start this scenario. And let's open the button again. All right, so now we received the record ID inside of Integromat. So using that, we'll be able to add Airtable module. And we'll use get the record to get details about the record. Okay, so now we need to connect the error table and select the correct base and table. And now we're going to take the record ID from the webhook. Okay, and now let's test the webhook. Let's press start and press the button inside of error table. Okay, so that means the webhook was accepted, means we should see the data. And we can see the search phrase inside of our error table output here. So it means we can retrieve the data. So then we can build the next step, the request to Google Gmail API. We're going to use for that the HTTP module. And it's going to be the HTTP OAuth 2.0 request because it needs to be an authenticated request. So now you have to create your own connector to Google API. And for that, you first need to create your special authorization application inside of Google Console. So go ahead to Google Console. You have to log into Google Cloud Console and create a new project. Create and a new project. Once you get into the new project, select API and services and inside of API and services, you have to click the enable NPI APIs and services and search for Gmail. And it's going to be the Gmail API. Open that and inside of that we need to click enable. Okay. Once this is enabled, we can go into the credentials and create new credentials inside. Since this is the first time we are using uh, Google APIs and NA APIs inside of this account, once we click on the create credentials, we'll have to also create the consent screen. So click OAuth client ID and we will need to configure consent screen. Let's use internal application. And then as app name, you can write anything you want, but let's just write Integromat so we know that we're using this for Integromat. Let's select one of the emails that you have attached to this account. For the app domain, we'll basically use uh, Integromat details.
For the authorized domain, we'll also add Integromat. And for the developer contact, we'll insert our email. Okay, once that's done, you can click Save and Continue. And now we will need to add the scopes that we want. So first of all, go to the filter and filter for Gmail API. And from the list, we will select the first one, which gives the broadest access to Gmail API. Let's click Update. And let's confirm the scopes. Save and continue. And we can go back to the dashboard. So now we'll have to return to the credentials and we can click create credentials again and OAuth client ID. Now as application type, we need to select web application. Client name, we're gonna also call it Integromat. And we're going to add the authorized redirect URI. All the links necessary will be uh, in the description of this video, so you can go down to the description and find all the URLs that I'm using and all the uh, tokens that might be needed for that. All right, so we got the client ID and the credentials, so let's copy the client ID and go back to the Integromat. And inside of create a connection, there is a field called client ID where you copy paste the client ID and do the same thing for the client secret, copy paste and go back to Integromat. And now what we'll need, we'll need the authorized URI. And the authorized URI is accounts at Google or Alf. I'll paste it in the description of the, of the video. And the next thing you need, the token URI. Okay, and we also need to add a scope. In this case, the scope will be the broader scope that, that we can get from Gmail API, which will be mail.google.com. We also need to add the advanced settings and add the authorized parameters. The access type will be offline. And we also need to change the scope separator from comma to a space. And once that's done, we can click continue and we will have an authentication window popping up where you need to click on the correct Google account and approve the authentication of Integromat. Okay, so now the Integromat is connected to your Gmail account and then we can start using API and using the URLs from the API to query directly the content of your Gmail. So first thing, to be able to look for messages inside of your Gmail, you need to put a, a query URL which is following. So now you can add the query text over here. The query text, because it's a URL, will have to be URL encoded, so we have a formula for that inside of Integromat. So select the text and binary functions and encode URL. And the content of the query, which is coming from the previous step, our search phrase should be inside of that uh, formula. We can click OK and let's give it a go. Press run once. And inside of Airtable, we're going to type a search phrase that we want to look for let's say a name of the client and we're going to click on the button. We can see that the query was executed and we can see the results inside of the data. The ID of the message has been found. Once we have the ID of the message, we will need to add another HTTP module to get the details of that message. The first module is only returning as the ID, the search result. So here inside of URL, we need another uh, link to query the API of Google. And this is the link. What we need to do, we need to change the user ID to me, because this is the user that you're querying by default. And as the message ID, we are going to use the ID from the previous step. Click OK and let's press run once. 
Now let's go back to Airtable and let's press the button. Okay, we can see that the scenario has run successfully and once we open the last bubble, inside we will see the details of that particular message. There is one more element that we need to do because the data is not being parsed by this module by default. We need to go inside and select at the bottom parse response so that we can use the data in the next step. Let's try with uh, another search phrase. And we can see that also this one was executed successfully and we found five results. Unfortunately here, we are getting response only for a single item, even though the previous module has found five items. So what we need to do, we need to split them into individual requests. So that's why we are using an iterator module. Inside of the iterator module, we'll use the array of messages that have been found. And for each item from the array, we'll make a separate query. Okay. So now, as a result, we should get five messages. And we can see five individual messages have been queried from Gmail. The next step is to add those messages into Airtable. For that, we'll create a new table and we'll call it emails. And we'll also create columns that correspond to the data that we want to retrieve from the email. So it's going to be from content of the email, subject, and the date of the email. Okay, and we are also going to link this one to the particular search phrase that we have been querying in the first table. So we're going to link it to the table one. This way for every search query, we'll be able to return links to multiple emails. Now let's go back to Integromat and we will create another module which is called create record. We're going to select the correct base in the table and for the fields we can see the content quite easily in the snippet. We can also see the date but for the from field and the subject, when we click on the payload and when we click on the headers, we don't see the details of the header. So we don't see the from and we don't see the subject. If you open the details of what was returned from your request, you can see inside of the, inside of the data and inside of the payload, you have a header subject. And all those headers are split in an array. So what we need to do to get the subject and from, we need to specifically point at those two headers from this array. So it's going to be header six and header seven. So let's go back to create a record. And from, we're going to go to the payload and we're going to select headers. I'm going to select the value of the header because that's the property you want to access. And then we are going, going to change manually double clicking on this. We're going to change it to seven. So now we can copy paste this to the subject field. And here we're going to change it to the header number six. And this, we, this way we are going to get the value from the header number six. Okay. So now we can test this scenario. Click run once. success and we can see five emails with the headers and the subjects and the dates. Okay, now let's link it back into the search phrase and the search phrase record that initiated this request. We're going to use the array aggregator for that. The source module will be the iterator because that's the one that is breaking the array and now we want to combine this array back into a single a single data flow. What we're going to select here also we're going to select ID to collect the ID of the created records. And now the final module will be update records. We're going to update 
the record that initiated this request. which is the one that we retrieve in step two. And then in the final field as emails, we're gonna click map and we're gonna use the array. Because it's an array of objects, we will need to do a slight modification. So we have to use a map formula and we're gonna map it using the ID because we want to extract a simple array with the IDs. Okay, let's play. Okay, let's press run again. And we can see that five emails got aggregated into one and that single update was executed here. And inside of the column, we can see link to the five separate emails. Let's test another search phrase. Okay, we can see that email was retrieved and linked back to the record of the search phrase. And also here we can see another search phrase also has returned to results. All right, I hope this video was useful for you and uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more business automation videos.